What's up guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host who's being cocked right now because my cousin is playing my own game and he's further in it than I am. Zach in today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Jinnit's ghost is Tsushima by the way. And yeah, he's further than me on my own copy of my own game, on my own PS4 Pro, on my own TV, you little punk! You bastard! Alright, I'm back. This story is called, Roommate Thinks He Can Get Free Wi-Fi. This was a few years ago when my current roommate had just moved in. When we were setting up his contract, I'm the main tenant, he's the subtenant, I asked him if he's gonna use the Wi-Fi. He was like, no, he'll try to get by with his phone provider's internet and hotspots and all that. Now, at that moment, I told him that it would likely be cheaper to just share the Wi-Fi with me than to pay a lot for limitless fast internet at least in my country. But he said no again, so I didn't list Wi-Fi as one of the extra costs, like water. Fast forward to him moving in. His move-in day was during my holidays, so I wasn't around. But I gave him an extended list of information and remained available via phone. While on the beach, chilling and getting burnt to a nice fire brick red, I suddenly realized that I had written the Wi-Fi password on the blackboard in our shared kitchen. So I was like, he must most definitely is using the Wi-Fi without paying. Cue my petty revenge. I hurried back to the hotel and got on my internet provider's webpage. I slightly changed the Wi-Fi password and kicked every device that had been connected with the old password out. And then I waited. It took only 30 minutes for that weasel to ask if something was wrong with the Wi-Fi. I straight up told him I changed the password since he had told me he wasn't going to use it. His response? He was just trying it out to see if it was faster than his phones. Sure, buddy. He's still my roommate and we have a great time together even though I always tease him with this story. Edit. I gave him the new password immediately and since then he has been using the Wi-Fi and paying for it like a good roomie. <laughs> well, I mean, that's funny and all. Personally, I wouldn't care that much. I'd just be like, alright, I'd come back and be like, okay, if you want to use it, then like, pay but eh, it worked out in the end, no hard feelings there, and he technically did nothing wrong. Just a funny little revenge story. This story's called, Won't Let Me Past? Sure, that's fine. No, this isn't my story, it's my friend's. He told me when I went into the charity shop today. So, my friend, Fred, has a mobility scooter with a trailer. He takes his dog with him. It's pretty big, but enough to take it through a small shop. Doing this doesn't leave him space for much maneuvering. He drove into the shop, following the one-way system correctly, but was forced to stop because there was a guy in his way. He was just just standing there talking on the phone. Now, when Fred asked him politely to move, he denied. In fact, he smirked at him and went even further into the center of the aisle. Now, petty revenge mode activated. After about a minute of waiting and the dog started whining, instead of shouting at him to move, Fred started his mobility scooter back up and started honking his horn. Now, bearing in mind that this guy was on his phone, it ruined his call. He couldn't hear a damn thing. Eventually, after about a minute, he finally moved out of the way. The dog got some treats too. There's some we keep behind the counter. What a turd biscuit. Uh, Freaking no, a whole basket of turd biscuits. Jeez, man. A rat bag full of schlongs. <laughs> This story is called, Don't Wanna Pay Overtime? Fine by me. I worked for a company that would never pay over 40 hours. Whatever day you reached 40 hours, you were done for the week. Not a bad policy, honestly. I'd usually work 10 to 12 hour days and have a three or four day weekend. That was all fine until the owner's son stepped in. We'll call him Jay. The nepotism was strong with this one. His parents had coddled him and put him in positions he had nowhere near the experience for. Instead of being humble and asking guys who had been around a while what was up, he just came in and acted like the hot shot, God's gift to the world. The issue started when he started taking contracts that involved switching over power from one system to another at large grocery stores. To keep it from getting technical, this mainly involved the store's frontline point of sale systems. Working 40 hours and cutting out when reached no longer worked. 
Sometimes we'd have to work 10 hours of overtime, which then they would say wasn't approved and wouldn't pay. I tried bringing it up to Jay, but he makes comments about how it was because we were screwing around and just wanted to milk the jobs. The truth was, once the changeover started, you couldn't stop working until it was done. The worst thing that could happen was the point of sale stations were down come opening. Work would start at 9 p.m. and sometimes end at 7 to 8 a.m. with almost always no breaks or lunch. After doing three changeovers and working overtime without getting paid for it, I'd finally had enough. I talked to Jay and told him that he needs to come out for a night and see what we are up against. He flat out refused. Jay told me to stop pissing and moaning and that the work wasn't that difficult. He said he could do it in half the time I could. That was my breaking point. I devised my plan for later that night. The pre-con meeting started at 8 p.m. Work started at 9 p.m. Removing the wiring and old boxes started right away and was usually done by 11 p.m. 11 p.m. also happened to be the time I'd reach my 40 hours for the week. Jay won't pay me for overtime? Well, then I can't work. He failed to understand this ain't a hobby. At 11.15, when the demo is done, I packed up my tools and quietly slipped out the door. I turned off my company phone and dropped my van off at the shop. I went home and enjoyed a nice week off before starting my new job. Through the grapevine, I heard the GC started blowing up Jay's phone once he realized I wasn't coming back. Jay showed up and apparently had it all finished by 3 p.m. Unfortunately for Jay, the contract stated any delays on the POS station would incur back charges to the company to pay for lost sales. In the end, I got a new job and a raise. The company had to pay $12,000 in lost revenue to the store, they lost the contract, and Jay got to eat crap for about 12 hours. May not be the best story, but it is mine. Ah, overtime, isn't it great when you actually get it? I wouldn't know. But I'm pretty sure it is illegal to not pay overtime when they do work, because it's you're literally supposed to be paid for the hours you worked. You could sue them if you wanted to. Alright, this story's called, Good Luck Living Without Forks. I was told this would do well here. Sorry for formatting on mobile. At the time, 22 female moving into a flat share with a man that was 31 and male. We didn't know each other before I moved in and he lived there for at least a year before I moved in. It was a nice place and he was nice enough, but he was a bit odd. Like the only thing in the fridge of his for two weeks was a bottle of Jack Daniels. He burned food on the shelf in the oven, so decided to bin it instead of cleaning it. In fact, he had a habit of binning things that would take too much effort to clean. Now, we both ended up moving our partners into the flat. His girlfriend was honestly a nightmare. The heating was broken and had been since before I moved in. Apparently, it was my fault I didn't get it fixed when she worked part-time instead of full-time, so she definitely could have gotten someone over to fix it while she was in. No, the landlord said he'd pay for it. The issue was I had to take a morning off so the guy could fix the heating. After this, they'd leave the heating on for two hours when no one was in the flats and when I complained about the heating and we were wasting money, I was just told it's their flat as much as mine and I needed to deal with it. This was the beginning of the end. This girl had problems with everything me and my boyfriend did. If we cooked and hadn't washed up yet because we were literally eating the food, she'd come in and ask that we be more considerate so she could cook. All this stuff was my cooking stuff. She took the TV out of the living room because she felt we used it too much. I didn't know it was my flatmates. She had a go at me for the volume on my laptop because apparently that was inconsiderate and many other things like my phone alarm being too loud every morning. Obviously, my boyfriend and I decided we needed Needed to move out. Q getting a new place. Now, we moved our stuff over slowly. Obviously, she was ecstatic. What she hadn't realized is, most of the kitchen stuff was mine. When I'd moved in, there were two forks, but full sets of other cutlery. My grandma gave me about 10 forks, and I left them in the drawers. Now, remember my roommate's passion for binning dirty things? He binned the two forks. This is my petty revenge for 
all the hassle she'd caused me. When it came time to taking my forks back, I took them one by one. Now, it got down to the final one and I left it for good measure. Just before we'd officially moved out, I got a message asking me where the forks were. I responded that I had taken them as they were mine. What followed was a huge rant about how I had stolen them and needed to bring them back immediately as they couldn't eat anything other than with spoons. I apologized but said that it wasn't my problem. She then told me there were forks before I lived there and I had to inform her her wonderful boyfriend had in fact binned them. They called me some names and attempted to tell on me to the landlord about the forks and other stuff, but that all got straightened out when I told him about all the things this guy had been. I haven't seen them since, and I love using my multitude of forks. <laughs> that must have felt really good to do. I genuinely dislike it when people act entitled to things that don't even belong to them. Um, and yeah, taking it back must have been nice. This story's called don't eat our food. My wife and I had just moved in together for the first time. We were young, so we moved into a friend's house because he had a spare room and we thought, what the hell? There was one more roommate in the house and assorted hangers, a small sidebar. The start of this revenge came out indirectly because of an incident next door to us two weeks after moving in. The neighbor next door had been murdered by her renter of her downstairs suite. Needless to say, the wife says, we're out of here. Can't blame her. So in the two weeks we had been at the house, as usual with roommates, food disappears and no one knows. I'll fix their wagons. We made a plate of hamburgers out of pet meat we had gotten for our dog. A pet meat is that stuff like the lips and gross crap that doesn't sell at the butchers by the end of the day, so they grind it up for pets. My wife and I go away for the day, and I know those craps will eat them. Sure enough, later that night, we get back and go to the fridge and see six are missing. We had made ten. I look at the idiots and ask them what happened to the burgers, and it's the, I don't know, look from everyone. So I looked at the dog and said, sorry, we're gonna have to make you new burgers. I went to the freezer and brought out a paper-covered package and put it on the counter to thaw. You could see it, and they were all smiling smiling, thinking they got one on me. I put the package down, and you could see in bright red letters on the package, it says, pet meat, and a happy picture of a dog and cat smiling. I put it down and just turned around to look at the guy so they could get a good view of it. I turned back to the dog and said, don't worry, I'll make you some more tomorrow for you. I'm sitting down in the living room next, and all of a sudden, they start leaving and were white as sheets. After that, our our food got left alone the last two weeks we were there. Every time I volunteer to make burgers for a barbecue, now you can see them remembering my famous burgers from before and they pass it on. Touch my food, will ya? Absolutely perfect petty revenge. And sh sh freaking serves these food thieves right for stealing food, them dirty food thieves, doing what food thieves do and thieving food. This story's called Not My Story. When I was in the Royal Navy, one of my best friends spun a dit, or told a story, about when he was married. Ray was and is one of the funniest men I've ever met and found himself married to one of the most obnoxious women I've ever had the misfortune to which I've ever turned up my nose. Had idiot Ray never married her, she would have easily used her personality as a contraceptive. Their arguments became legendary within the branch, mostly because he would get pissed. Okay, in fairness, we got pissed together and tell us about that. Anyway, we were on a course together for about five weeks and was fairly easy for we seagoers. Medical technicians struggled a bit because of their lack of seagoing experience. We were sat in the bar one evening and I asked him how he was getting on with his missus. I'd met her twice and it was an instant mutual disaster dislike. So, sat in the bar, he revealed his latest argument. As I say, they were legendary. 
and his soft Welsh lilt, we confess that the previous night had been a cracker. They were going at it, hammer and tongs, and had just reached the plate throwing stage. She really was that bad when there was a knock at the door. Ray threw it open and screamed, What? Hello, do you believe God is your savior? Obviously paraphrased. Oh, happy days. The Jehovah's Witnesses had turned up. This is where the petty revenge ensues. No, I don't, but I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Why don't you come in and my wife will make us a coffee while we discuss it. And Ray is not his real name, but bloody close. <laughs> I'm sure she enjoyed making them a cup of coffee in the middle of throwing plates around. That's a healthy relationship. This story's called, Teacher Wouldn't Let Me Use the Restroom. I Got Her Suspended. The title explains it. To preface, I have Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. This qualifies me as disabled, and so starting when I first got sick in high school, I was required accommodations by state law. Being disabled was hard and pretty complicated since after being diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, I started getting various other health issues ranging from kidney issues to neurological issues to fibromyalgia. My school was very reasonable, and even after missing three months when I was first diagnosed, I still got all my credits. The following year, I was doing all right. Then second semester, one of my teachers left and the new one was a complete monster. She refused to teach with the textbook and used Wikipedia instead. Wouldn't give us any tests or practice for the AP exam we were due to take. I was very frustrated and felt unprepared. She absolutely loathed me since I had a little pink pass that allowed me to take my meds in class. Go to the nurse as needed and have unlimited restroom breaks. She thought I was a disruption. I would do my best to wait until she was done talking unless I was in too much pain, but she would always roll her eyes and groan at me. One day I had just gotten in from a doctor's appointment and rushed into her class. I asked her to go to the restroom and said I'd be right back. She said no. Well, asking is just a formality. All of the teachers get emails about the disabled students and know about their accommodations. So I told her, I need to go to the restroom. I'm going. As I left, she groaned something about me always wasting class time and faking it. I picked up my stuff and took it with me. I went to the restroom. Then I went downstairs to my dean's office. I signed in and when he came out to get me, I told him about her attitude and how she refused to let me use my accommodations so I came here. I simply told him that they should let her know that she's required to let me leave the class for a reason and I have medical paperwork to back that up. He apologized profusely and called the teacher. He told her that he was sending a substitute to her room and he wanted to speak with her. Then and he called for a substitute teacher on his walkie-talkie. She arrived at his office looking very displeased to say the least. He sent me out of the room and I waited in the lobby for, I think, 20 minutes. Once she left, he had her stop at the desk to fill out some paperwork. He brought me back into the office to fill out paperwork too about what had happened. A few other students who heard what had happened came in as witnesses and after that, she was gone for three weeks. To my knowledge, she was suspended suspended because she opened them up to a potential lawsuit. Blatantly denying a disabled student their accommodations is against the law here, and the school didn't tolerate it one bit. I will admit I do feel a little bad, but I don't take any crap when it comes to my body and my diseases. Yeah, Crohn's disease isn't playing around. When they gotta go, they gotta go. I don't know all the details regarding it, but I'm pretty sure it can do some damage if they don't. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.